Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be sewing the Elaine pouch. So, let's get started. Let's take a look at the pouch. It measures approximately nine and a half inches wide, by seven inches high, by three and three quarter inches deep. And it has a very nice wide opening. It really can be used for just about anything. It would be great for cosmetics or toiletries. The bottom of the pouch is finished with binding and the binding helps to give the pouch structure. So I'm pressing on the bottom here and it's not collapsing as I press it. Here's another one that I made and this one is just turned with the lining side out and you can see how nice and smoothly that lining lays inside the pouch. If you would like to sew along with me, I will put a link to the pattern in the description below the video. Let's take a look at the materials that I will be using in this video tutorial. I have a number 4.5 YKK zipper. The width of the zipper tape on this zipper is 1.25 inches. I will be using 100% cotton quilting fabric for both my exterior and interior fabrics. Right here I have my bias binding strips cut out. This is the lining fabric and there is no need to interface your bias strips. Here I have my zipper tabs and each tab has been interfaced with the Pellon SF-101. This is pattern piece B, which will serve as the bottom exterior and interior pieces. And each piece has been interfaced with the Pellon SF-101. And this is pattern piece C, and it's going to be used to interface the bottom of the pouch. And here I'm using Pellon FF-77. These two pieces are pattern piece A and they will be used for the interior lining. Each piece has been interfaced with Pellon SF-101. And then for the exterior pouch I've cut out two pieces. Each piece has been layered with a piece of Pellon FF-77. And we're going to be quilting these layers together before cutting out pattern piece A, which will be used for the exterior pouch. In this step, we're going to prepare our bias binding. So you'll take the two strips of fabric that you cut out from the lining and place them end to end, just like this. Then take your ruler and you want to place the 45 degree angle onto the bottom edge of the strip and you want the edge of the ruler to be right here at the top corner. So just get it lined up and then cut straight across. And then on this piece you want to do the same thing. You want to take your ruler, place the 45 degree angle on the bottom edge, and on this side you want the edge of the ruler to be at this corner right down here. and then go ahead and cut straight across. So you should have two 45 degree angles going in the same direction. Then you want to place these strips right sides together along that angle that you just cut out. And then clip them together. Then you'll sew straight across the strips with a one quarter inch seam and a stitch length of 2.0 and I'm going to do this off camera. After sewing the two strips together just iron the seam open and then you want to fold the bias strip wrong sides together. You want to make sure that the raw edges are even and you're going to press it all along the length of the strip. Next you want to cut the bias strip to length and you will find that measurement in your PDF pattern. I've trimmed the bias strip to the proper length 
And now I'm just going to open up the ends and I'm going to place the ends right sides together. Make sure that the strip is not twisted. And I'll just hold it together with a couple of clips. Once you have everything clipped into place, you're going to sew straight across the end, one quarter of an inch away from the edge. And I'm going to use a stitch length of 2.0 and again I will sew that off camera. I finished sewing the seam and I pressed it open and now you just want to refold the binding in half again and then you can go ahead and set it aside for now. We need to layer the exterior fabric onto a piece of foam and to get it to adhere to the foam to prepare for quilting I've used a temporary adhesive spray. If you do decide to use a temporary adhesive spray, you want to make sure that you read all the warning signs on the back of the can before you use it. I've already sprayed the foam and I have the exterior fabric layered down and now I'm just going to mark some lines for quilting. And I'm just doing a very simple straight line quilting on here and I will space my lines one inch apart. Also, I am using a friction pen on the video to do all of my marking. You want to be very careful when you use these pens because while the ink will disappear with heat, it can come back with cold. I only use these on my videos for demonstration purposes. I'm going to finish marking my lines and you can go ahead and quilt your panel as desired. I'm sewing on a Juki DX 4000 QVP, which is also known as the Kokochi. I will be using a stitch length of 3.4 and there's no need to back tack at this point. When you're sewing straight quilting lines, you always want to sew in the same direction. So I'm just simply going to follow the lines that I've drawn here. And then once you're done sewing your first line, just go ahead and sew down each line. I always start in the middle when I'm doing this. Just go ahead now and finish quilting the rest of your panel. After quilting your panels, you want to mark a line straight down the center. And I will just be using this quilting line right here as my center. Then you're going to take pattern piece A, and this line right here is the body center. So you want to place this cut line right here on the center line that you've marked. And then you're just going to trace all the way around the pattern piece. And then after you're finished tracing around this first side, you'll just flip this over, match that center line again up with the center line on your panel. Make sure that you're matching the top and the bottom, and then you're going to trace the second side of piece A onto your panel. After tracing the pattern piece onto the quilted panel, we're going to stitch right inside that traced line all the way around the pattern piece. And you want to stitch as close to the line as you can possibly get. I'm ready to start that stitching and I'm using a stitch length of 2.0. 
you want to stitch right inside the line. You do not want to stitch on top of the line. And there's no need to back stitch. Get as close as you can without stitching on top of the line. That line of stitching that we just sewed is going to prevent your quilting lines from coming out. And now you can go ahead and cut out your exterior pattern piece. And you do want to stay right on top of that traced line. Then you'll go ahead and prepare the second layered panel in exactly the same way so that you'll have two pieces of pattern piece A for the exterior. In this step, we will be preparing our zipper to sew into the pouch. You want to take your zipper and cut it to the proper length. And again, the measurements are in the PDF pattern. I did stitch the ends of the zipper together on this end, and that's going to make it easier to install the zipper tabs because the ends here will not separate. So you need to take the zipper tabs. I have the zipper right side up. You're going to place the zipper tab with the right side of the tab against the right side of the zipper and hold it there with a couple of clips. and then you'll install the other zipper tab on the other end of the zipper. And the zipper is still right side up. Now I'm flipping the zipper so that the wrong side of the zipper is facing up. And you're going to take the tabs and you're going to place the right side of the tab against the wrong side of the zipper. and clip in place. You'll do the same thing to this end. Right side of the tab to the wrong side of the zipper. Then what you're going to have are the zipper tabs clipped right sides together with the zipper sandwiched in between. And then you're going to sew each end one quarter of an inch away from the edge. I'm sewing the zipper tabs on with a one quarter inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 2.6 and I will back stitch at both ends. Now I flip the zipper around and I'm going to sew the tab onto the other end. And again I am going to back stitch. Now that the zipper tabs are sewn into place, pull them away from the zipper on both sides. You'll be bringing the wrong sides of the tabs together. You want to match up all of the edges and make sure that everything is nice and even and put a couple of clips in to hold everything in place. Now we're going to base the tabs together across three sides. We'll go down this side here, pivot, baste across the bottom, and then we're going to baste right up this side here. 
and I'm going to baste about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the tabs. And I'm still using a stitch length of 2.6 to do the basting. And we're going to end right there. We are not going to be sewing across the zipper seam at this point. Now you can go ahead and baste the tabs on the other side of the zipper in exactly the same way. Next, take your zipper and you want to find the center. I've already marked the center of my zipper straight across with my friction pen. And I did this on the wrong side of the zipper. Then you also want to take one of the exterior pieces and find the center top. So I just simply folded it in half and then I put a pin to mark the center. And you'll take your zipper and you want to open it up all the way. And we're going to take the mark on the zipper, the center mark on the zipper, and match it up with the center mark on the exterior pouch. And then I'm just going to put a pin in to hold everything in place. Next, take one end of the zipper, where the zipper tab is, and you want to match that up with the bottom of the pouch. All of your edges should be even on the sides and on the bottom. And I'll put a couple of clips in to hold that in place as well. Now, I should mention that you are pinning the right side of the zipper to the right side of the ex exterior. And then you'll flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Match up the sides and the bottom and put a couple of clips to hold everything in place. Now we're going to start pinning the zipper in place and I do like to use short glass head pins to do this as opposed to using wonder clips. So I'm just going to start lining the edge of that zipper tape up with the edge of the pouch and I'll pin as I go. Now some people like to clip into their zipper tape around curves. I don't recommend that because zipper tape is very prone to fraying so I don't like to clip into my zipper tape if I don't have to. But you'll find that your zipper tape should ease in very nicely around the curve. And one way that you can help it along is just to roll it around your finger. So you roll it around your finger and then put in a clip. And these pins really help everything to stay in place very nicely. It should not shift on you as you're sewing. And now that I have that side pinned in place, I'll just go ahead and pin in the other side. And now that the zipper is pinned into place, we're going to sew all the way around one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm sewing with a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of one eighth of an inch, and I am going to back stitch. Now you'll want to keep your pins in for as long as you possibly can, but do not sew over them. And as you're coming around the curve here, if you need to use a stiletto to hold, help hold everything in place, that's always very useful.
And then back stitch when you get to the end. In this step, we'll be sewing the lining to this side of the pouch, and I'm just going to call this the front of the pouch. Take one of your pieces of lining, and you want to find the center of the lining. I already have the center marked here, but if you don't have it marked, you can just simply fold it in half to find the center. Now you want to place the right side of the lining to the right side of the front. And you're going to match up the center mark of the lining with that center mark of the zipper and place in a couple of clips. Now for this I will use clips. I don't use pins for sewing the lining to the front. So I have a couple of clips right there along the center. Then I'll clip the sides. And I'll clip the other sides. You want to make sure that all of your edges are even, even along the bottom here. Now you can go ahead and finish clipping everything in place. And again, if you round everything around your fingers, that helps to ease everything together. And then you'll go ahead and clip the other side in place exactly the same way. And now that we have everything clipped into place, we're going to sew one quarter of an inch around the edge. I'm sewing with a one quarter inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 3.0, and I am going to back stitch. Again, if you need to, you can go ahead and use a stiletto.
if you need to move your zipper pull out of the way, you can reach under and just pull it up. And then back stitch at the end. Now we can go ahead and turn this so that the wrong side of the lining is facing the wrong side of the exterior. And you want to just push out all of the seams. I'll close the zipper up. And what I like to do now is take this over to my iron and I press all around the seam line of the zipper until everything is sitting very nicely. And I do that from both sides. I'll do it from the exterior side and then I will also do that from the lining side. I just finished pressing the exterior side and the lining side. And then the next thing I'll do is line up the edges of the lining and the exterior. I'm going to clip them together and then we're going to base this edge closed one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Just make sure that those bottom edges are nice and even. So after clipping this is what it looks like from the lining side and this is what it looks like from the exterior side and you can see those edges are all meeting up very nicely. Now I'm going to baste across one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0 and you can back stitch if you like, it's not totally necessary. And just make sure that those edges are staying even. In this step, we're going to be sewing the zipper to the pouch back. So I have the pouch front right here. And now I also have my second exterior pattern piece A that we've prepared before, and we're going to call this the back. You need to find the center of the back just like you did before. All I did was fold it in half, and I placed a pin right on the halfway mark. I'm going to place the back onto my work surface, and I want to open up this zipper all the way. Then I'll place the front and the back right sides together. And I want to match the center of the zipper again with the center of the back. So I will just go ahead, match up those center points, and place a pin. Then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to match up the zipper tab with the side of the back. Make sure that all of your edges, including the bottom, are even and place a few clips in there. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Match up the side of the zipper tab with the side of the back. Make sure that the bottom edges are even and place in a few clips. Now I can go ahead and clip the rest of the zipper to the back. And it's helpful if you take the front and just tuck it under here, just to give you better access to the back of the pouch. And then you want to pin the zipper in place exactly the way you did for the front. Again, when you get to the curves, it helps if you roll everything around your finger to get that zipper tape to ease in there. Make sure the edge of the zipper tape is even with the edge of the back of the pouch. Okay. 
and then you'll go ahead and pin the zipper in on the other side. And again, I do like to use the short glass head pins here. It really does help to hold everything in place and the zipper does not shift on me as I'm sewing it. And now that I have my zipper pinned into place, I'm going to sew the zipper to the back one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to sew with a stitch length of 3.0 one eighth of an inch away from the edge and you do want a back stitch. And just like before, get as close to the pins as you can, but don't sew over them. I'm going to move my zipper pull back down a little bit. And also the stiletto is helpful just to hold everything in place. and then back stitch at the end. In this step, we're going to be sewing the lining to the pouch back. So here's the pouch back that we just completed sewing the zipper in, and you want to take your second piece of lining. Again, you want to find the center of that lining. Mine's already marked, and if yours is not, you can just find the center by folding it in half. You want to keep the front of the pouch tucked under, just like this. And then you'll take your lining, and you're going to put it right sides together with the back, matching up the center of the lining with the center of the zipper. And I like to put a couple of clips around the center to hold everything in place. Then you're going to go ahead and clip the lining to the bottom of the back. Make sure that the side edges and the bottom edges are all even. You can turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. You're matching the lining up with the back of the pouch. Make sure the edges are even. And again, when I'm clipping in the lining, I do only use the wonder clips. I don't use the pins for this. Then continue clipping the lining to the back. You can ease the curves in again by rolling everything around your fingers. Just want to get that lining to lay in nice and smoothly. If you need to readjust a little bit, you just go ahead and readjust. And use as many clips as you need. The lining is now clipped to the back. So this right here is my lining. This is my back. And this right here in the middle is the front and that is sandwiched in between the lining and the back of the pouch. Now we're going to sew the lining to the back one quarter of an inch away from the edge. I'm sewing with a one quarter inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 3.0. You do want a back stitch, which I've already done.
and then back stitch at the end. And just like before, we're going to turn the lining so that the lining and the back of the pouch are wrong sides together. And you can go ahead and push out the seams. And then you're going to iron all around the zipper seam from the lining side and from the exterior side. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. I just finished pressing all around the zipper seam and now you want to clip the bottom edge of the lining with the bottom edge of the exterior just like you did before and you'll base these two layers together one eighth of an inch away from the edge and I will do that off camera. Our next step is to top stitch all around the zipper opening. I like to do my top stitching from the exterior side and you can top stitch one eighth to a one quarter of an inch away from the edge of the zipper. It's whatever you prefer. If you're sewing on a flatbed machine, the easiest way to do this is to orient the pouch so that the lining side is against the bed of the machine and then you'll start sewing from one side. So you can start sewing from either side, it doesn't matter. You'll stitch across, pivot, and start sewing around and then you'll just move the pouch as you need to to get it under the presser foot. And you'll do this all the way around. I'm going to be using the free arm on my sewing machine. So for me, I want to turn my pouch in this direction. And then I'm going to slip the end of the pouch onto the free arm and I'll start sewing from the side and I will go around and turn the pouch as needed. I slipped the pouch onto the free arm of my sewing machine and I'm going to start at one side and I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the zipper. I'm using a stitch length of 3.4 and it's not necessary to back stitch. We'll take care of that at the end. So just start sewing across and then you'll pivot and then start sewing around the zipper. When you get back to the side where the zipper tab is, you're going to pivot again. If you need to move the zipper pull up a little bit, you can do that. And sew across the tab. And then pivot when you get to the other side. When you get back to where you started, you'll pivot again. And then you can back stitch over your original stitches. If you're doing your top stitching on a flatbed machine, you're going to place the pouch lining side down on the bed of the machine. You'll position your presser foot at one side and then you'll just start sewing around and you'll maneuver the pouch around as you go. In this step we're going to be sewing the binding to the pouch and the binding does get sewn to the lining side of the pouch. So just open up your ring and put it around the bottom of the pouch. You want to match up the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge 
of the bottom of the pouch and go ahead and clip it all the way around. I have the bias binding clipped into place and you can see it fits on perfectly. You have to remember that bias binding has a lot of stretch to it so you don't want to be pulling it as you're clipping it. Now we're ready to sew and we're going to base the binding to the bottom of the pouch one eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm basting the binding to the bottom of the pouch with the binding on the bed of the machine and I am basting with a one eighth inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 3.0 and you don't need to backstitch. You'll just maneuver the pouch around as you go. You want to make sure that the binding is staying even with the bottom of the pouch. In this step, we'll be preparing the bottom of your pouch. So you need the two bottom pieces and this you cut out from pattern piece B from your lining fabric. You also need pattern piece C, which is your foam interfacing. I take one of the bottom pieces and place it so that it's wrong sides up. And then you'll take your foam interfacing and place it right on top of that uh, bottom piece. You want to have even spacing all the way around. Then you'll take your second bottom piece and sandwich that on top of the interfacing. So now you have the two bottom pieces wrong sides together with the, inf with the interfacing sandwiched in between. And then you're just going to clip it all the way around. So clip those layers all the way around the bottom. After clipping the layers together, you just want to make sure that all the edges are even. And then we're going to baste 1 8 of an inch away from the edge. I'm basting 1 8 of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0. And there's no need to backstitch. Just make sure that all of the edges are staying even. After basting the bottom layers together, we need to find the centers of the long sides and the two short sides. So once again, you can simply fold it in half. And I'm going to use an erasable marker, my friction pen, just to make a little mark there for the center. We'll do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Then I'm going to fold it in half long ways and make the same marks in the center. And then just so that it's easier for you to see, I'm going to put a pin in each one of those center marks. In this step, we'll be sewing the pouch bottom to the pouch body. We need to find the centers of both the front and back panels and the sides. So I'm going to start by bringing the sides together. So here are the sides and I'm just going to match them up. Make sure that you have them lined up correctly. 
and I'm going to put a clip in to hold it in place. And now I'm going to stretch the pouch out in both directions, to the left and to the right. So this will be the center of one side of the pouch. I'm just going to put a mark and stretch again to the right and I'll put another mark right here. After I have those marks established, I'm going to take those two marks that I just created, I'm going to bring those together, make sure you match them up correctly, I'll put a clip in to hold everything in place, and once again you're going to stretch out to the left and to the right. And then I will put a mark for each side center. And lastly, I will put in some pins to indicate those markings. Next, I'll take the bottom of the pouch and I'm going to start setting it into the body. So the first thing I will do is match up the center front and back. So I will just line up those pins and I'm going to put a clip on each side. And I can take the pins out now. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. And you are matching up the bottom of the pouch to the exterior side. So line up those pins and put in a couple of clips. Then we'll do the same exact thing on the sides. Line up the pins and put in a couple of clips. And this is the last side. Now we can set the rest of the bottom in, and I like to clip towards the curve on each side. I'll turn it this way and put a clip over here. Now when you get to the corners, as always, it helps to round things around your fingers. You want all of those edges to be nice and even. So go ahead and clip in each side, each quarter side the same way. Use as many clips as you need to use. Here is what the bottom of the pouch should look like after clipping in the bottom. And here is what it looks like from all the sides. If you're worried about the curves slipping as you're sewing, you can always take a needle and thread and hand stitch around the curves and that will hold everything together as well. I'm going to sew the bottom in with a stitch length of 3.0 and a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch. You want to take your time here as you go around. It's helpful to have a stiletto and I do sew from the binding side. You can try sewing either from the binding side or from the bottom side. It's up to you. I find it's easier to put it in from the binding side. So the bottom of the pouch is against the bed of the machine. There's no need to back stitch at the beginning here. And you just really want to take your time. Keep your clips in for as long as you possibly can.
really want to take it slow around the curves and use your stiletto to help hold everything in place. And I just keep readjusting the body of the pouch. It makes it easier to keep sewing around. I just want to try and get it as flat as I possibly can. And when you get back to your starting point, just stitch over those previous stitches and then back stitch. After I sew in the bottom, I just like to check all of my seams. I just want to make sure that I caught everything in that seam line. And then I will also turn it right side out. Push out the seams. And then I will check my seam from the exterior side. I just want to make sure that I caught everything in the seam. And then once I'm sure that it all looks good, I can go ahead and finish off the binding. You want to pull the binding up and away from the body of the pouch. And then you're going to fold the binding over. You want it to be covering the seam line. And I'm going to clip the binding in place all the way around. And then you have two options for sewing down the binding. You can either sew it by machine or you can sew it by hand. And if you've watched my videos, you know that my preference is always to sew by hand. Here's my binding all clipped into place. And now I'm going to go and hand sew it and finish up the pouch. Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed watching this video tutorial and I hope that you'll give the pattern a try. If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I would really love to have you as one. I also have a Facebook group called Rosie and David Patterns and I'd love to have you there as a member and see everything that you're making.
I would like to sincerely thank everyone who has supported me by subscribing to my channel and liking my videos. So please like and subscribe.